Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate you having this hearing. Mr. Tubin, this morning on national television, you said in talking about the uh, whistleblower complaint relative to the phone conversation the President of the United States had with the President of Ukraine and the President's conduct relative to that country, you said today's Justice Department has been corrupted. Is that an accurate representation of the statement you made? This it sure morning? is. Uh, and you were making that relative to the complaint that was filed and that you guys were talking about in the, it was a group discussion on, uh, on the show this morning, is that right? Yep. Okay. Have you read the Department of Justice statement relative to this matter? I have. Can I just read it for the, I might just read it here so we all have it. The President has not spoken with the Attorney General about having Ukraine investigate anything relating to former Vice President Biden or his son. The President has not asked the Attorney General to contact Ukraine on this or any other matter. The Attorney General has not communicated with Ukraine on this or any other subject, nor has the Attorney General discussed this matter or anything relating to Ukraine with Mr. Giuliani. You're familiar with that? I am. And you stand by your statement that I the sure Department is, is corrupted, and it's based on what the whistleblower said in the complaint. No, it is not based entirely on that. I just asked that. you what you were talking about, the whistleblower, and you said it was based on the whistle. You said the Justice Department is corrupted based on what you saw in the complaint. It was based on the, uh, the uh, whistleblower's complaint. It was based on the partial... It was based on the whistleblower's complaint? In part, and if you let me finish my answer, it is gonna, also based on the uh, further... I'm, I'm going to interject here and caution uh, my friend from Ohio that this subject is not germane to this uh, hearing, and it's disruptive and it's disrespectful... Mr. Chairman, you've been through this... process that we would have... To, well, no, let me finish. Okay. It's disrespectful to the process that we would bastardize it for political purposes. Now, it's within my discretion to allow you to continue uh, along this line, and I'm going to do so from, uh, I'm going to allow you to uh, continue, but I just want to caution you that in the future, I'm not going to tolerate this kind of imposition in uh, my subcommittee hearing. All due respect, it's entirely germane. Uh, it's, it's plus, my, I, I would like my time. I would like my time. It, uh, res well, I'll, I'll reset restore, at three I'll, minutes thirty-five I'll seconds. Well, you have no right uh, to. The heck, I don't. That, but I will. The heck, I don't. No, you my don't. time, and it was well, it was three thirty-five, uh, uh, and no. I have every right to ask. The witness actually in his opening statement brought up Ukraine. I didn't. The witness said on national television the very statement I said that he said on TV, and he said he agreed that that was an accurate representation of what he said. He brought up Ukraine in his opening statement. And I'm you gonna, know I have full discretion to ask the kind of questions I'm, I'm I want. Gonna, and I need, re, I need three minutes and 35 seconds I'm, on the clock. I'm going to restore your time. And Appreciate I'm going, it. I'm going to ask you that in the future uh, you respect this the is, integrity. Uh, hold on. I want you to respect the integrity of my subcommittee hearings and not bring in this extraneous uh, issue would you go for a uh, that question? Has no, Chairman, you go for a question? That is, that is not germane to this particular... This is the Judiciary procedure. Committee. We have a witness testifying in front of the Judiciary Committee who today on national television said the Justice Department is corrupt. If that's not relevant, tell me what is for this committee. No, this hearing is about secrecy in... Uh, that doesn't change the fact that the witness brought up Ukraine in his opening statement this morning on, uh, this morning on national television said the Justice Mr. Department Joy. is corrupt. Mr. Jordan, if we're going to uh, have a discourse, I'm going to need for you to listen to me just as I'm listening to you. I object to you bringing this subject into this hearing because it's not germane, but I'm going to allow you to continue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. But I'm going to ask that in the future, uh, you limit yourself to this hearing uh, intruding with extraneous materials such as this. And with that, I, I will, will do yield my best, you. Mr. Chairman. I will thank you, and I'll yield you. Uh, three minutes and 30 seconds to uh, uh, continue your questioning. Our witness who said this morning the Justice Department is, cor is corrupt on national television, basing that, at least in part, earlier said, basing that on the whistleblower uh, blower complaint, we need to remember a few things about this whistleblower. He had no firsthand knowledge of the phone call. He wasn't on the call, but we do know one thing about this whistleblower, Mr. Tubman. He had a political bias. We learned that from the Inspector General. The Inspector General told us, there was indicia of arguable political bias. You know what that is? That's Washington speak for this guy hated Trump. And yet that is the basis for our witness telling us that the Justice Department is, is corrupt. Let me give Wait, you a few can I, Would you like an answer? I will in a second. 
Let me give you a few facts just to give a little context to this. Facts that happened, to the, that happened in the Justice Department prior to Bill Barr taking over the Justice Department. Facts, that, things that happened in the Obama Justice Department. You familiar with this, Mr. Tubin? that the Obama Justice Department's FBI spied on two Americans associated with the presidential campaign. You familiar with that? You familiar with the fact that the Obama Justice Department's FBI opened a counterintelligence investigation on the Republican Party's presidential candidate and didn't tell the candidate they had an investigation, a counterintelligence investigation open on him? Didn't tell him what was going on? You familiar with the fact that the Obama Justice Department's FBI allowed Peter Strzok and Andy McCabe to run that investigation? Peter Strzok, the guy who said, don't worry, Lisa, we'll stop Trump. Trump should lose 100 million to zero. Andy McCabe, now, this, this is not Jim Jordan talking, this is now the Inspector General. The Inspector General said Andy McCabe lied three times under oath. The Inspector General, Michael Horowitz, said that Peter Strzok should have never been allowed to head up that investigation, not because he had this bias against Clinton, or bias against Trump in favor of Clinton, I should say, but because he ran the Clinton investigation. He should have been prohibited from running that. But the Obama Justice Department allowed it to happen. The Obama Justice Department allowed the Clinton campaign paid for a document, the dossier, to be used to go to a secret court, Mr. Tubin, to spy on one of the people associated with the Trump campaign. And the former FBI director leaked information through his friend of the New York Times in an effort to get a special counsel, which he was successful in doing. And finally, I would just say this. On January 6th, the Obama Justice Department went to the Trump Tower when it was President-elect Trump. January 6, 2017, they told the president-elect he was not under investigation, all the while trying to set him up as part of their Trump-Russia investigation. And again, not my words. That was in the report released just three and a half weeks ago by the Inspector General Michael Horowitz. And yet today, based on a whistleblower that had no firsthand knowledge, wasn't on the phone call, has a political bias against the president, you're saying this Justice Department is somehow corrupt. Well, I mean, if you want to just talk about the whistle, whistleblower, one of the extraordinary things about the whistleblower was that um, in the whistleblower's report, there is a summary of the phone call between um, the president of the United States and the president uh, of Ukraine. And of course, as you point out, the, um, the, yes. the whistleblower did not have access to the, the partial transcript that we've not seen, but notwithstanding the absence of firsthand access to the, that transcript, the whistleblower summary of that, of that, trans, of, of that phone call Mr. was Tubin? extremely accurate, which suggests a great deal of credibility on the part of the whistleblower, wouldn't you say? How do you know it's, extreme, how do you know it's extremely accurate? Mr. Chairman, are you kidding me? The gentleman, yes, it has expired. Gentleman's time has expired, and let me say that uh, you got a second this, round. It won't be a second round on uh, this line. Heck, of it inquiry. won't. No, it won't. And I want the gentleman to know well, that the, the next time the he chairman, comes in, the chairman, I want the gentleman. One more, one more question for Mr. Chairman. To know that the next time he comes into my subcommittee and disrupts it in this way, how is this disrupted? That we, yeah, it, it, because you're off topic. And so when no, what, this, if this should happen again, I'm going to be prepared you, uh, through our rules to hold you accountable. And with that... Mr. Chairman, the rules allow that, me to ask the questions I want to ask. The only thing disruptive that, here is your behavior in limiting and interrupting my question. It was my five minutes. You interrupted. I got one more question with, with, that I would appreciate being able to with, ask the witness. With that, the gentleman is no longer recognized. Um,